So all of this, oh my gosh. all of this is yeah. Korean natural farming solution <laughs> that they're turning into honey. You see how smart the bees are? They used this bag, look, they, they waxed it and propolised it up and trapped the beetles inside here so that they can't do any, any uh, expansion inside the hive. <laughs> Diluted, fermented comfort juice in water. Why? Structured, Structured water. <gasps> and they drink the whole thing. And you pierce the bag? Yeah, you poke poke uh, four or five puka in there and, and they go to town. And it, and they love it. <laughs> they love it. And then you can you can look in, and see the result of, of what they did and that they just seem to be more charmed when they're drinking this stuff. Yeah, see how sweet they are? You could you could do anything you want to these bees pretty much right now and 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 they're just stoked. They're so happy and you know people are always like, well, you know, how is it that that you can work with bees in the way that you do? And I, there's no credit for me to take. <laughs> there's no credit at all for me to take. Wow, they they buckled this down really fast. Oh, so you added that additional thing on top so you could kind of yeah. Train it over. It's the ghetto fabulous way to feed bees. Like I, I don't have all the expensive tools to to do that. But so all of this, oh my gosh. all of this is yeah. Korean natural farming solutions <laughs> that they're turning into honey. And so, like if you're you're, you're fermenting comfrey, well now you're gonna have comfrey honey. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it's 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 so, magic. So when we ferment it, the microbes like pre-digest it and get out any of the pathogens and like turn it into something that's super medicinal. But then the bees pass it back and forth again, so it's continuing to ferment over and over again. So what, what is it just like? Is it micronizing even more? Are the particulates getting smaller and smaller and smaller when the bees do it too? Or? I think they're just. Uh, Super selecting. Oh wow, that's all free cum. Microbiome. Yeah, yeah, this is all free cum. And that's that's this is the comfrey. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, all this is taste it? is freshly sealed. So yeah, we'll, we'll taste it. So remember that honey is antibacterial. So I don't care what you have on your finger; it doesn't matter. It's it's officially clean. What? Whoa. That's so unique. <laughs> oh, sorry. Whoa! <laughs> That's fermented comfrey, right? Mm. Dripped on. Mm. And you can tell how fresh this is. Like that. So look at this side. Mm. That was already done before I put in the comfrey. And then this is all. This is all new. It's like super fresh. It's soft. And it's really. Good. So Shane, like, uh, just to put it in perspective, what is the commercial average production in Hawaii, and how much production are you seeing in, in this hive in just a month? Okay, so so normally, I, I this hive wouldn't be an example of, of honey production, because this particular hive is all about baby making, and this yard in particular is all about baby making, it's, it's like growing the microbes, growing the bees. This is where I would come to grab a handful of microbes and bring it to another place. This is where all the magic happens. So the, another issue that I found in commercial beekeeping is the lack of genetic diversity. So the, the, basically the reflection of the microbes too. So if I go to the top of Mauna Kea and grab that, that pristine, amazing soil and bring it over here where I, like things seem to be struggling, now the microbes are teaching each other, you know, the same thing. So I bring to this yard all the genetics that I know are available. And now their offspring have all the wisdom of, of, of the genetic diversity that's here. So, so then I could take this from here and, and bring it to another yard. And now they bring that wisdom there. So... So in in in, in um, commercial farm um, bee farming, what's happening is is they're 
artificially inseminating. They're not allowing the queen to mate naturally. And that's bottlenecking the genetics. And, and it's nobody's fault. It's, it, you know, it's understandable to see a problem in the hive like, like uh, for example, um, mites. And if you know a type of bee is good at getting rid of mites, well, that's an answer then. Okay, I'm going to take their genetics, isolate them, and then grow more bees that are good at getting rid of mites. But what they're forgetting about in that process is, what about all the other things? Yeah, what about the cleanliness? What about, what about uh, you know, the, 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 the gentleness? What about the, the honey production? What about the, the pollen production? What about the, the wax? What about all these other things that bees are really good at? If you continue to, to bottleneck their genetics, they forget all that other shit, and then there's another big collapse, you know? So, so that's what I do here, is just make sure that all the genetics are available to them. So this hive, what, to get back to what David was talking about, this hive is about babies. But still, this hive, even though I don't have it set up for honey, produces about 25 pounds of honey a month. And the national average, well, let's just talk about Hawaii average. It's 130 pounds a year. Hmm. And this is doing 25 pounds a month. Minimum, minimum. I'm just saying a low number, like that, that's just the minimum. And um, the, the, uh, the honey hives that I actually have set up, like that one, now you're getting in the 40 to 50 pounds a month. Wow. And, and the Hawaii average is 130 pounds a year. So, obviously there's something going on. And I don't use any chemicals. All the commercial beekeeping companies use chemicals or some kind of treatment to get rid of the mites or the beetles. They use roach poison in the hives. All different kind of things. And I don't use any of those things. I just feed them the solutions every now and then. There's a queen. There's a queen. Look at her egg sticking out of her fat ass. So she just what? dropped it because she yeah, got scared. So that's another magical sign that, that mm -hmm. you know, like, you can just that's say that's... In the top. Too. Yeah, you can just say that's a coincidence, but, you know, the experience of seeing the queen is... is yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Because there can be 200,000 bees in this box. There's about 55,000 to 65,000 bees in this hive. In this one, yeah. Oh, they're down below, too. It's double mm -hmm. stack. Yeah, I see that. Mm-hmm. And normally there would be an excluder. So that's the, that's the thing too is I can show the world that I'm doing things almost identically as commercial beekeeping, including foundation, plastic foundation in the hive, doing it the, almost exactly the way that they're doing it and not using chemicals. I'm not using chemicals. And that's, that's what I aim to influence in commercial beekeeping. You know, I, I just want to show them there's another way. Because honey is meant to be medicine, not toxic. I want to give my children mm. medicine. Awesome. So yeah, we we got we got really lucky right now to see that. Aww. And you, you see her butt Ooh. too. That's a that's a that's a like genetics. I can see her genetics by looking at her colors. You know, everything that she brings to the table. Like I. I know that she's really genetically diverse. Trip point at her again. I mean, I see her on there, but yeah, yeah okay. So she's this nice big bee with a bigger butt. So the bees appreciate her pheromone too. So the way she smells. So like David touched her. So that one bee's like, "What the? Let me wow. clean you." <laughs> And if she ever slows down, the bees will recognize Help her out. and and either either create a new queen or or do whatever they need to do to get her back in action. And uh, we just had a bunch of rain here. So that's another reason why I gave them this. Because I, I don't normally give them this. It's just available to them out in a little bowl and, and, and they have access to it that way. But, um, but yeah, you know, they, they, they weren't able to forage because of all the rain here recently. Right. So, so her production went down because she's that smart. She's like, well, I know there's not enough food to feed all these bees, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. But now, now these bees are like, hey, 
We've got plenty of food. The sun's out. Lay some eggs. So that's why she's in this top box. But she's Still utilizing the all the space that she has to lay eggs. And that's what this hive is for. Bee production, basically. Mm. So that one, you see there's a little, a little uh, separator. You can see it from here between the two boxes. Yeah. That's because the queen is only staying down here in that hive. And all honey is on the top. And happy bees make more honey. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, you, you, I, I'm so happy. I, I feel like I could work all day long. I don't even consider what I do work anymore. I'm so happy to do this, so excited to do this, that I don't ever feel like I'm losing any energy whatsoever. I'm I gaining. I just think it's crazy how mellow they're being with how, like, with the queen on the top. I mean, usually, like, they're, they're mellow on the top and the queen's excluded and then when you get close to the, the queen they'll change their pitch you can hear it. and the, the bees will like start to circle around her but with this they're just like whatever <laughs> she was exposed even by herself yeah, yeah. Wow. what a whole new world mm -hmm. did, you, did you find the tweezers? I did not find the tweezers but it, that doesn't matter it's uh, a bee to the hive is a cell to the body. Bees are constantly dying and being reborn. No need to feel guilt about squishing a bee or killing a bee. Um, I, I have thousands of cells dying right now. And, and there's a few hundred bees dying over these next few moments. And, and uh, it, no, we, didn't, we didn't do anything to them or anything. And it, it's just... it's. Yeah, I just squished any or anything. I think I, got, I squished one. One? Yeah. And that's, you know, I, I'm not purposely trying to squeeze and kill bees and, and so on and so forth. You know, I'm doing my best to... Killing one is pretty good. I mean, most yeah, people, I'd seen. imagine if you're working a hive fast, you would smash a whole bunch. Yeah, I, I worked in commercial crazy. beekeeping, and each hive I'd kill several hundred to several thousand. Just each time you time. touch them. And, and, yeah. and typically when you open up a commercial hive, you'll, like, in this hive, you'll see all the diversity. Like, there's, there's bees with, like, all black. There's bees with, like, a little bit of yellow. There's, um... There's bees that have like a lighter brown and a fuzz to them. The, dr the drone and the male bees. There's like big black ones. There's there's yellow ones, and they're they're all different genetics. But typically, if you open up a commercial hive, all the bees will look the same, and you, you won't be able to see a difference. They'll all look like one type of bee. Right. The crazy thing is, is when there is extreme weather, <laughs> the queen's so smart. That she recognizes the bees that are good for, like, that, that will actually work in the rain and the cold. And that's the German-Russian genetics. So you'll come, you'll come to the hive and a bunch of bees will be all black. And that's because the queen's so smart she knows, I better lay eggs that are conducive to this environment. She, that's how smart she is. She, she's, she's aware of the semen that she's collected. And, and that's why another reason why we can't be artificially inseminating bees. She, if she doesn't know what's inside her, how can she fend off all the all the crap? You know, how can she give the bees the best tools to do their job? And what is their job? I, I, you know, you could you could say a million different things, but the bottom line, I know their job is to make love for the plants and the trees. That's their only, you know, that's their major purpose. The bees are the conduit for the love making that the bees I mean that the trees and the plants can't make they can't do it so the, that's what the bees are doing so the vibration in the honey is the love frequency you know so so it's medicine in the in the, in the physical sense we know that because it's good for you right but <laughs> but the more potent powerful medicine is when you put love into your body it's fixing everything you, to, you, you know, I, I don't care what you have. You, you put love in your body all the time, and you're going to be a big bundle of love. Invincible. Awesome, man. So cool.